Hello, welcome back, channel CGB, go for it, go blue, here, and this week we are doing Green Black Week. Green Black, one of the more popular color combinations that people play no matter what the format, no matter what the game, but in this uh, version of Duels, it's a particularly compelling mix of cards. It can go in a lot of directions. We have options all over the place of what to play and how to play it. And uh, one of the stronger options seems to revolve around this card, Winding Constrictor, which, of course, working with cards like Long Tusk Cub and working with Energy and anything that puts on plus one, plus one counters can be a pretty awesome card. So just so you know, every time you use it with an energy card, you get an extra energy. Every time you use it with a plus one, plus one counter card, you get an extra counter. So Cub kind of plays both sides of that. So these are the dynamic duo, but also in the energy package, Greenbelt Rampager, Linsleeve Siphoner, uh, another addition to probably the dream team over there, the super trio, Walking Ballista, working with Winding Constrictor is glorious. Tireless Tracker makes the cut as well. And then uh, Nissa Voices Endicar is one of the big payoffs. Just pump your whole team huge. Bristling Hydra is awesome. Gear Hulk is awesome. But what do you do with the rest of the deck? Well, it's interesting. The, the Green Black has some problems. It, it's got some really bad matchups. It is fantastic just with the cards we mentioned, just with this theme. It is fantastic against other small creature decks. This is because your creatures cost about the same as their creatures but yours get big, are big already and just keep getting bigger and bigger to the point that other creature decks can't really compete. Not to mention Walking Ballista against small creature decks is usually game over. So the cards I've already shown you are already make the deck great in those matchups. So what I like to do is use the rest of the spots to shore up the weaknesses, or at least try. It's This deck has some very big weaknesses and they are unfortunately very common on Steam meta Control decks, uh, blue control decks, super friends, planeswalker decks that are a big weakness, and so is tutelage decks. So with that in mind, what can we do to kind of uh, shore up at least some of that? Well, the tutelage decks, the good news is it's not as terrible as other creature decks like team or energy. Um, you can present a quick clock, you can make a giant cub. Once they get into fog land, you can find a walking ballista and use that to kind of get around fog. So that is, there's kind of a game plan there, which is why we still only have one reclamation save. We don't need that many of them. But what about the control decks and the planeswalker decks? Well, you gotta be able to grind, uh, grind significantly too. We have tireless tracker, but we need more. So in come two life crafters bestiary to kind of give us payoffs just for casting our creatures, whether they get countered or not, and whether their board gets swept or not. And in come uh, some more kind of big effect cards, uh, Planeswalkers, Omnixilis, and Nissa, also to generate value without getting eaten up by sweepers and fatal pushes. And then uh, to battle the Planeswalkers, we've got both the Never to Returns, we've got the Sky Sovereign, and that's why we have what we have. There are, are plenty of cards missing. I don't want Smuggler's Copter, it interrupts the dynamic duo. And I also think Sylvan Advocate's just better in this deck because we have man lands to pump, the Vigilance is nice, and it just kind of goes along with our bigger creature thing. Whereas Smuggler's Copter requires us to tap one of our creatures to crew it. The thing about tapping one of your creatures to crew Smuggler's Copter is these creatures are usually bigger and doing better than Smuggler's Copter uh, in a lot of cases. Maybe not Glintsley, but you want to keep attacking with it to get energy. Green Belt is bigger than Smuggler's Copter with an extra toughness. And so why even have a Copter to put in harm's way? How about Aether Sphere Harvester, another very popular vehicle that even uses the energy mechanic? I don't run that because like uh, the games where you want the life gain and the over the top kind of play are against other fast creature decks. We already have decent matchups against other fast creature decks because of our creature base. So that's where I can make room for cards like the Bestiary. And I've seen decks like this with Blossoming Defense. I still think that that's, I don't, I think that that's a Band-Aid in those control matchups. I don't think that protecting your creatures 
against a deck with that much removal and sweepers is the way to go. I'd rather just get more value off of my creatures for casting them. Yeah, so there's other cards that didn't make the cut. I'm sure that you guys will tell me about them in the comments. Feel free to. But this is the version we're going to go with today to hopefully have a little more game against control. Anyway, monologue over. Let's get in. Let's get to work. Like last week, I'm with our zombies. I'm sure we may make some adjustments as the week goes if we can find any worth making. I really love the way that zombies finished uh, the play the play week. So. Hopefully green black can do the same. It's another great archetype to explore because it's spiky. You can build it very competitive, like I, which I prefer. And, uh, but there's still so many options because of the number of good cards. Okay, I can keep this. Uh, you know, part of the dynamic duo over here, if it's unanswered, plus you want a removal spell on the draw. If your opponent's off to a quick start, two is fine. And here come the needle spires. Will it be that Arch Nemesis Vehicles, we shall see. Sylvan Advocate, I'd rather start drawing land soon, but Advocate's always a pretty good draw. Let's see what our opponent's up to. Tap land, tap land. So giving us some time, I like it. I don't think we just want to slam a Constrictor. It almost always, the first thing you play dies, especially Constrictor, he's a little lightning rod. So let's hold it for a minute and get Advocate on the board. When to play your Constrictor. Hopefully we'll get plenty of good examples of when to cast Winding Constrictor in this uh, in this week's videos. Okay, our opponent's also on two lands and they've got Smuggler's Copter. All right, drew the land. So that's perfect. Now we can go ahead and play our Constrictor and have a black up for the push. Otherwise we'd have had a decision to make there. But yep, yeah, well, Winding Constrictor is great in this spot too, because if our opponent takes the time to kill it, they likely can't cast a creature or threat as well. So they take another turn off of being the aggressor. And if they just cast a creature and leave it on the battlefield, we'll punish them next turn because we have a Ballista available. Declaration in Stone. So there it is. Like I said, they usually kill the Constrictors and they did in this case as well, but uh, like I also said, they didn't get a chance to resolve a threat, and we get to continue being the beatdown. Hmm. Hmm. Interesting situation. Well, I know for sure we want to attack. That part's pretty obvious. I think the other part is interesting. I think I want to crack this clue and try to hit a land drop more than I want to do things like play the tracker or the ballista really want to get my lands going and even if there isn't a land on top of my deck I want to get closer to it all right um, I don't think ballista for one is worth it yet so we'll just sit on the push and then next turn Kalitas can probably come out and play I can't imagine our opponent won't try to attack in some way this turn get a creature on the board and start attacking because this copter is not getting any warmer over there. Another declaration in stone. Okay. Well, our opponent has taken the defensive role. And these clues hopefully help us curve out. But now I am certain they're going to have a hard time with this Kalataz. So do we want to play that or the tracker? Kalataz is such a beating, though. But I think I can still wait another turn. All right, we're gonna go tracker, get our clue, and then we'll put a cub out too. If our opponent attacks us once with this smuggler's copter, I'm not worried about that because that means they have no defense for the long tusk cub that's gonna come at them. Yep, we finally get around to a creature. It's a scrap heap scrounger. And he is going to try to get in there with the copter. I'm sure he wants to draw another land very, very desperately. But that is an excellent target for a fatal push, the Scrap Heap Scrounger. And especially with the Kalitas uh, in the equation.
Soren. Okay, our opponent playing Mardu vehicles and going all the way to the top rope, but not getting the lands they need, clearly. All right. So there we go. Let's get him. And then we'll play Kalitas and hold up Grasp Push. And that's just going to be that's just going to be a nightmare for our opponent. And Copter's crewing up. Let's go ahead and get it dead. Uh, I think we'll just use the Grasp. It's more mana efficient here. I'm not afraid of a Glory Bringer or an Avacyn anytime soon in this game. I'm sure they're in there, but the lands just aren't there. All right, one, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten, eleven. Should be Stevens, uh, barring some unforeseen. Well, I feel for the opponent. I'm sure they kept a two-lander. So did we. We drew out of it. They did not. Although, I would have loved to play that game uh, with them curving out as well, because I think our hand certainly stood a good chance, and it's a matchup I always like to explore. Any, any deck against vehicles is usually a matchup I want to explore. All right, joining session. Please don't freeze me. I'm, I'm, I've been a good boy. I make my videos. I do my streaming. I'm good for the game. You don't want to freeze me joining session. You don't want to freeze me. How long do we give this thing? Put a stopwatch on it. All right. Let's see. We're going to give it a timer. Oh, there we go. Didn't even have to. I was about to start a 10 second countdown. Covered it. We're good. We're good. Homeless Jace is back in there. Will it be the same opponent? Maybe we can do another vehicle showdown. Yes, we will. And they're on the play. Let's see if they can pay us back for that uh, mana screwed beating they received. Ooh. See, I definitely keep this hand most of the time, but it's scary because we're on the draw. And now I know we're against vehicles, and this has no removal. I'm going to keep it because I would keep it against anybody else, but this may not be the best decision. And Shambles, right off the bat. Let's see if there's a turn two copter here. All right. And we'll see how regrettable this, this hand might be if we never draw a fatal push and our opponent has a turn to Heart of Curin. Ah, veteran motorist. Okay. I can tango with you. Get your scry on. This hand would be excellent with a winding constrictor, that's for sure. That or any removal spell is what I most want to see in these next uh, draw steps. Winding Constrictor or any removal spell would go a long way to improving my confidence. Mm. All right, Cub, get to work. Probably gets to trade with that motorist. We'll see. Our opponent did play two declarations in stone and who knows what else for removal. So maybe he'll just take the liberty of killing this cub right away. Evolving wild. So he runs a lot of the tap lands. When we get to Mardu Vehicles Week, which I'm sure will happen eventually, I'll, I'll share a lot of my philosophy about using tap lands and tri lands in that deck. I just, I think most people do it and I hate it. I wonder what he's getting double black for. Hmm. Liliana? Something like that. Liliana would make Siphoner pretty bad. Anyway, that's a pretty good draw. Our opponent can... Well, probably just block and trade here. 
we make our energy, is he more likely? He's more likely to block. So I guess I want to keep it as unlikely as possible. But if he has Harness Lightning, oh, then I wouldn't do it anyway. All right, let's just send him. I will take the trade if you want to trade. Let's, I just don't want a motorist on the board for his vehicles. It's usually a pretty, a, a bigger deal than people realize that extra point. And we'll get Siphoner on the battlefield instead of Tracker. I'd rather play that when I can get a clue right away. And thanks to Aetherhub, we're in range of drawing a card next turn if he doesn't kill this. What I'm worried about here is Gideon or Nahiri. Seems likely. Walking Ballista. Oh, that's annoying. We'll go over the top of it, though. It'll be fine. But I hate losing a Siphoner that way. Give our opponent credit. They were passing the turn quickly enough that they didn't clue us off to the Ballista in hand. Maybe I missed something somewhere. But they weren't being... It wasn't obvious, as it is sometimes where people sit there with a tapped land on the battlefield not passing the turn. Another hub, huh? Oh, that gets us to the Tri Energy, so we can double pump Hydra, and Hydra will probably be a big pain in the butt from this position. Unless he has Oath of Liliana, which is possible. This could be the Planeswalker heavy version of vehicles. Let's see what you got. How do you want to play against a Bristling Hydra and six energy? You probably can't kill it, so you have to go around it. Okay, he's going to Gideon. Yep. Gideon's good. It's a good card. <laughs> it's a good, powerful, annoying card, but he has to keep putting blockers out, or the Hydra will just eat them. All right, what do you do? I don't even know if I want to play you, take away from the Hydra, but I guess I need a board presence, don't I? So I think this turn is about Tracker and Rampager. I mean, he's gonna block with a knight, I'm sure. Ooh, with Ballista. I guess he doesn't foresee himself activating Ballista much. And he doesn't fling it at me. Doesn't make sense. All right, let's uh, do some colorless mana here so we don't get somehow uh, messed out of our energy, as we do need it. Woodland Bellower is on deck, which can go get a Winding Constrictor in this deck. But yeah, I do think I need this. He might have Sweepers, I doubt it. He's just... The Mardu deck can go a number of ways. I think I'm gonna play around the more, the most common mid-rangey version that still actually intends to crew its vehicles with creatures and therefore doesn't wanna blow them up. It's an intimidating board. What are you gonna do against it? Declaration. Tracker, sure. Still got two clues out of the deal. Another knight, sure. I'm guessing he has a fatal push. Ooh, okay. Well, Bellower is awesome. And if he doesn't run sweepers, but he didn't play a land, so he's got four spells in hand. If he doesn't run sweepers, then we can go get a winding constrictor and just start going nuts. Let's see what happens on this attack. I have a feeling that he'll push the rampager. He might double block this hydra. But let's make him have it. Mm-hmm. Okay, no push. Cool. In that case, 
In that case, what I'm going to do is clue, threaten Grasp of Darkness to scare his glory bringer. And I'm just going to play another Hydra. But the plan is actually a uh, clue crag. And then next turn we can uh, bellower and get the other get the constrictor to make massive hydra. It also gives us a second to wait and see if we want to get bellower wreck sage if he plays anything that would make us want a wreck sage. It is vehicles, so you've got to guess there are some vehicles in there. I'm thinking sky sovereign might be on deck. I mean, he's got to have a reason for having this hand. He's stuck on four, but there's probably some awesome fives in there. Glorybringer, uh, Omnixilus, he did fetch double black. Makes me think about that. Uh, so probably not Glorybringer. Avacyn, uh, Sky Sovereign, those are what come to mind. All right, Dipala. Sure. Draw me a card. Okay. Now I definitely want that Winding Constrictor. Ooh, and we drew that Rex H anyway. It's good to be the king. Um, yeah, let's do it. I want the Winding Constrictor on the battlefield in case he wants to double block this. Might have a fatal push. Might have a fatal push, but let's get rid of Gideon. Yeah, no double chumps. That's what I thought. All right. Now let's see what he can do. Needs a big effect. Needs it this turn. Guessing he didn't draw the land, or I think he would slam it. Um, Declaration, Stone, he's already played one. Yeah, there's just not even, it's gotta be like an unlicensed disintegration at this point. Okay. Let's just go big ballista, pre-combat. works. Let's send everybody but the Constrictor. Because if we send the Constrictor, he can force a block here, and if he does that, I have to shoot three at this, where I'd rather save it. I mean, otherwise, though, this doesn't have a good block. Maybe Constrictor's okay. Maybe just taking out Dipala is right. In fact, maybe I just do that first. So he doesn't even get a block with it. Yeah, let's just do it. It can't be... If it's wrong, it's not wrong by much. It, it's the maximum pressure for sure. And it's not, it's not like Dipala isn't a pain on her own. I, on this board, she's not good. She's not pumping anything, but she'll do something eventually. Those vehicles are in there. Other dwarves are in there. Let's see, we can get this to eight. Nine, 10, 11, 12, 13, 14, yeah. I mean, we can't kill unless he just blocks nothing. Which is looking possible. Okay, there you go. Otherwise, no reason to budge. And he doesn't do anything. What is going on? There it is. Okay, anguish on making, very late. Um, let's go ahead and make a slightly bigger Hydra while we can. We'll keep one Hexproof activation. I guess it's not late when you consider that we could have pumped this for two, but we got an extra counter on our Ballista because of it. I don't know, it's tough. I think he was just hoping I'd make a mistake so he could get something out of that on making, which isn't unreasonable. Sometimes that's the only play you have, is to hope they mess up. All right, he's gonna 
He's gonna tap that. Well, kind of tap it. He's gonna freeze, freeze frame that, but that's gonna do it. Unless he's got something else up his sleeve. And it's hard to imagine what that could possibly be. And there we go. It's in a kind of a match because we got paired the same twice. We get a 2-0 on the Mardu vehicles. And let's try a third one. Still haven't seen the Lifecrafters bestiary or the Planeswalkers. We've had some redundant draws, which is great when you're playing against the creature decks, but what will we play against this time? That is the question. Will it be, yep, I guess. Wow, I've never done this before. I've never queued up against the same uh, opponent in deck three times in a row. Mm, it's too land heavy, but man, this cub can just go crazy. Still, I think I've got to try something else. I'm happy I did. I am happy I did. This hand has what you want. A little bit of value, a little bit of aggro, and a removal spell for whatever the first worst threat can, might be. Here comes the Evolving Wilds. What do you fetch this time? Surge is gonna go that, or Sergey. Sergey is gonna go with uh, planes. And we'll see if it's more of the traditional vehicle draw coming at us. And let's get Siphoner on. See if he has Declaration in Stone in that opener for the third straight game. Or a Harness Lightning, perhaps. Or he might just Walking Ballista for two, which would be fine with me. Take a straight one for one. Oh, it's going to be a tap land. I think we're going to get a card off the Siphoner. For the first time today, an, a card, a real card off of our Siphoner. Yep. I will pay. Oh, there it is, too. We found you. We found the bestiary. And I think that's the play. I think uh, we'd rather play tireless when we can get a clue. And yeah, I think just getting the scry going as early as possible is where we want to be. We've got more lands than we need, so we want to scry lands to the bottom, and we want to scry, scry great creatures and removal spells to the top. Right. We know he has Anguished Unmaking, but if he's pointing that at this card, which doesn't represent any kind of clock, I am so happy about it. Bestiary also gives us funky options, like the ability to cycle a Walking Ballista for one. It's pretty funny to me. Uh, I have done it once. It was a weird situation. Don't judge me. <laughs> don't say you would never. You don't know. You haven't been where I've been. All right, he's gonna get a scry on, but I'm happy to see a motorist when I have this card available. So I doubt we'll do anything to kill it. I'm sure we'll just take the tracker route. And I'd rather draw a card than have a clue. So we'll probably, let's see what we, let's see what we get. Bottom. And another land. Yeah, I'd rather straight draw the card. Although this would get the quagmire out of my hand. And then what? We untap with five, and we have Ballista and draw a card. So we're just saving drawing a card for next turn, and we have a clue instead of a card for one turn. That seems pretty good. So in that case, the better line appears to be to play Tracker in a tap land. Since all we're doing is putting off having one card in our hand for one turn. We make it up next turn when we play Ballista for two. All right. And we have uh, untapped mana for probably the rest of the game, though that remains to be seen. And we are on the value train. We have Clintsley Bestiary Tracker going on. Our opponent cannot be thinking that they could possibly outcard us. Wow, three evolving, all four evolving wilds? Are you kidding me? Are you kidding me right now? Well, there you go. I mean, if you love Evolving Wilds, you better love Evolving Wilds. No blocks. The answer is in my hand. All right, 
we find Declaration and Stone? Yes, we did. I think our opponent plays like eight Evolving Wilds and eight Declarations and Stone. Let's see the top. Nope. So two lands on the bottom of our deck. And let's pay that energy. And two more lands off the top of the deck. Life is funny. Life has a funny way. All right. Let's go see if he's got an answer to the siphoner. And I'm, I mean, I don't know what I'm expecting, a shock. We haven't seen anything like that yet, so it's unlikely. So we'll go for two. We'll make sure we leave a green mana open without spending energy. We'll activate the bestiary. That is a creature, so that's great. And I'll just do this now. I'm not necessarily sure what I'm worried about, but I, I guess activating revolt for him. I don't know. I'm not necessarily sure what it is I'm worried about, but may as well. Um, having Avacyn up it would be another thing that I couldn't prevent if I passed the turn and he just played his land. Walking Ballista of his own. Okay, it's on. Very annoying when I have these one toughness things, but that's okay. Uh-huh. Now, I want him to be the one pointing his Ballista at my Ballista. Because then I get the point to the face. Also, now that I have mana open, I can try to set it up so that I can respond. We'll take that card. That is a good card to have. So now I can respond to his Ballista with it by activating mine. But if so, is the play to... Is the play to grasp his Ballista? He activates it, I pump. I just think that there's a better use for Grasp, such as Glorybringer. I think we just let our Ballista go. I think we just have to not worry about it. And, uh, yep. I think that's the way. Oops. I don't know why I'm tapping double colorless. Uh, punt. Um, let's do it like this. Okay. Yeah, I tapped a mana for no reason. We're just gonna have to let that go. My bad. It's, I get into habits with these uh, Aether Hubs. Bad habits. But I really want this grasp up for Glorybringer, Avacyn, anything of that nature. All right, it's gonna be another veteran motorist into the Ballista. Interesting. I think my opponent knows that until I get to eight mana, they can uh, prevent pretty much anything here. Okay, pass and turn. I'm gonna go ahead and fire away, but I'm gonna take this out. And I want it done on this turn so he can't power this up and block with it. And now we can draw a card. Yay, more of those. Don't want to play that until the Lista is gone. All right, bottom. Three lands on the bottom of the deck. The hits just keep on coming. So we got some energy. Can't really get to four. Let's send in our cub and see if he lets it grow. He does. Yeah, we're gonna pump it. Uh, you could have Fatal Push. Yeah, we aren't going, we are not going to pump it. We got the Glint Sleeve. Once this goes away, the energy could be useful. And is this a turn for a bigger Ballista? You play it for two, shoot that, he shoots that. It's not great about setting up uh, what's Glorybringer do here. I guess it would take out my Ballista, probably. Take out my Cub is meh, but he might. Crew up this caravan, attack me, I don't know. I 
think we go for it though. Okay, leave a green up, use no energy. Get another card off the bestiary. It's a good one. And we'll do this now before he can untap. Alrighty. We got a hand of great removal spells. I just need the mana up to use them. Which means we just gotta get out of this turn without too much disaster happening. And you can make a big caravan and come after me. I actually think I want to block. This game's gonna be great if I just stay alive. Whereas if I get burned out by unlicensed disintegration and such, that's where I lose. I think I just want to block. And I know shooting the scrounger doesn't do much, he can just get it back, but it makes him use the mana. I think I just want to make sure I stay alive. We'll be fine. I do think he probably has like an unlicensed disintegration, because don't they always? Declaration in stone. God, he draws a Always draws the decks. Never draws the unlicensed, it seems. I'm sure he'd rather have unlicensed. Four lands on the bottom, I believe. Three, four, five, six, seven, eight. So three can play Siphoner and draw a card. And five can play Omnixilot. But I think it's time to start leaving up removal mana. We're ahead. We just need to be patient and stay ahead. Vital Force is good. But yeah, we're just gonna leave Removal Man up for at least this turn cycle. We're ahead, let's just stay ahead. And here comes, he's got a critter. It's a Liliana. You can get back a motorist maybe? Or he's can make a zombie, right? Hit two Dipalas. All right, let's draw. If I kill this, I mean, it doesn't matter, really. I'm, well, Vital Force can probably take out Liliana if I kill this. It's not really how I want to use a removal spell, but I do have a plethora of them. Yeah, we have no lack of cards. So it's time to just start using them. Just make sure I always have an answer to the most threatening, scary things. Uh, five lands on the bottom? Did I say that last time? Are we up to six? I'm losing track. All right. I think the play is Vital Force, take out your Nissa. Makes sense to me. Or your Liliana. Seems the easiest, the cleanest. Throw a hub at you this other land. Mm, he didn't have Fatal Push last time. It would be silly to suddenly have it this time. Although, silly happens. Magic is not without silly. Alright, got there. I think we'll play a Rampager. So we have a defensive presence. We'll draw a card. We'll leave up Grasp. For the hasty thing. Yeah, that's a good draw. Always a good draw against the vehicles. Oh, Vital Force, are you ready? We've definitely seen Bestiary at its bestest in this one. There's the anguish I'm making. Got rid of Nyssa. Down to nine, though. There's a Ballista. It's gonna be a Whittle. A Whittle Ballista. 
to see if he lets me untap here and get my card off Siphoner. Mm -hmm. No, no near reason to pop a Grasp off here. He just takes a Siphoner down. Hard to turn a Tracker down. Although we have all the value we need, maybe I should be looking for Winding Constrictor to just end this game. Things with more power and toughness. Ah, but it's a good creature. Why shouldn't I draw it? And we even drew the land to go with. Okay, so let's attack and see if he lets me get the energy here. I think he will. I think he wants to block, then kill my Siphoner. And that's fine. I don't love it, but it's a thing. It's a thing he can do. But this is probably time to get our Hydra online. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven. Draw one card and have Grasp up. Or we can play Rexage instead. Uh, I think Rexage Hydra is better. Get that off the battlefield. Then we'll play a Hydra without drawing a card. It gives away what we have, but that's okay. I want him to know. It's fine. <laughs> it's totally fine if he knows. Ready for whatever. And there is Gideon. The last, the last planeswalker to the party as we have run his hand completely down and he's just gonna fling Gideon in the graveyard. And, uh, yep, there we go. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight, nine. We got the Stevens attack. We'll draw that cub. That's fine with me. And let's bring it home. Well, we got a trifecta of matches. Uh, I talked a lot about different matchups before we got into the into the video. And vehicles kind of in between that small creature and planeswalker deck scenario, but uh, we got the 3-0 on it today. I hope you enjoyed. I'm sure we'll get a better variety of opponents tomorrow. But if you don't like vehicles and want to see them get smashed, you may have enjoyed this a lot. All right, guys, I'm out of here. I'll see you later.